Thursday. All right. <laughs> eh, hope everybody's having a good day. It's going to be a beautiful day here. We, we rejoice in what God is doing and, and uh, his presence in our life. Um, there's only a few things. You know, someone once said, what, uh, uh, death and taxes or the, the certain things right yep. there. But we have something else certain as Christians that, that is the Jesus Christ. We, we, uh, we have the grace and forgiveness that's found in Jesus, our Lord and Savior, the promises that are found in him. Those are rock solid. Those are certain. You can see the uncertainty of the elections and uncertainty of the voting mm -hmm. and all kinds of other stuff and uncertainty of what's going to happen tomorrow as far as these things go. But we have a hope that no one can take away from us. So we're, we rejoice in that. Mm -hmm. And um, so we have more than death and taxes. Yeah, something much better. <laughs> so much better. Than, yeah, exactly. So, anyway, we're going to be in Exodus chapter 19, Exodus chapter 19, and uh, this is kind of an interesting chapter. They're, uh, now they're at Mount Sinai, and uh, I think, uh, if my memory serves me correct, I looked this up before, I think Mount Sinai is about 7,500 feet high, so about over twice as high as any of the mountains in Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. which are kind of ridges, yeah. they're hills right. r relatively in there. So it's a pr fairly high uh, summit. I think once in a while it even gets a little snow on top of it. So right. even down even down there. It's about to get some different weather in this chapter. Yeah, this is a, this is a little diff different here. So let's take a look at uh, chapter mm -hmm. 19 from Exodus. Chapter 19. In the third month after the Israelites left Egypt on the very day, they came to the desert of Sinai, after they set out from Rephidim. They entered the desert of Sinai, and Israel camped there in the desert in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain, and said, This is what you are to say to the house of Jacob, and what you are to tell the people of Israel. You yourselves have seen what I did to Egypt, how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now if you ob obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations you will be my treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words you are to speak to the Israelites. So Moses went back and summoned the elders of the people and set before them all the words the Lord had commanded him to speak. The people all responded together, We will do everything the Lord has said. So Moses <clears throat> brought their answer back to the Lord. The Lord said to Jesus, I am going to come to you in a dense cloud so that the people will hear me speaking with you and will always put their trust in you. Then Moses said to the Lord, or then Moses told the Lord what the people had said. And the Lord said to Moses, Go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow. Have them wash their clothes and be ready by the third day, because on that day the Lord will come down on Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. Put limits for the people around the mountain and tell them, Be careful that you do not go up the mountain or touch the foot of it. Whoever touches the mountain shall surely be put to death. He shall surely be stoned or shot with arrows. Not a hand is to be laid on him. Whether man or animal, he shall not be permitted to live. Only when the ram's horn sounds a long blast may they go up to the mountain. So after Moses had gone down the mountain to the people, he consecrated them, and they washed their clothes. Then he said to the people, Prepare yourselves for the third day. Abstain from sexual relations. On the morning of the third day, there was thunder and lightning and a thick cloud over the mountain and a very loud trumpet blast. Everyone in the camp trembled, and Moses led the people out of the camp to meet with God, and they stood at the foot of the mountain. Mount Sinai was covered with smoke because the Lord descended on it in fire. The smoke builded up from it like smoke... Um, from a furnace, the whole mountain trembled violently, and the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder. Then Moses spoke, and the voice of God answered him. The Lord descended to the mountain of Mount Sinai and called Moses to the top of the mountain. So as Moses went up, and the Lord said to him, Go down and warn the people, so they do not force their way through to see the Lord, and many of them perish. Even the priests who approach the Lord must consecrate themselves. Or the Lord will break out against them. Moses said to the Lord, The people cannot come up Mount Sinai because you yourself warned us. Put limits around the mountain and set it apart as holy. The Lord replied, Go down and bring up 
bring Aaron up with you, but the priests and the people must not force their way through to come up to the Lord, or who will break out against them. So Moses went down to the people and told them. All right, what a scene <laughs> in there. Let's pray. Gracious Father, thank you, Lord God, for your word. And we stand in awe at your power and might. Teach us now from your word and lead us, we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All right, so uh, there's, there's a, a few things here. One of the things I think that stands out to me is the holiness of God uh, in, this, in this case, and that nothing unclean can be in his presence. It's not that God doesn't want us in his presence. It's that we can't be in his presence uh, because nothing unholy can be in his presence. And so you see that kind of played out in a very physical way here and, and associated with Mount Sinai and what's going on there. And uh, this, this, would, <laughs> this should be a note to all of us that if we think we're going to stand before the Lord <clears throat> in our own uh, strength, in our own righteousness or whatever, we can't stand before the presence, in the mm -hmm. presence of a holy God, a holy and perfect and just God. And if that's, <clears throat> if that's all there was to God, if it was just, okay, a God is holy and he's just, there's no hope for us. I mean, that, if that was it. But he's also loving and caring and compassionate. And uh, it's only Jesus who stands in our place that makes us holy before God by taking upon himself our punishment that we deserve, but also giving to us his righteousness. So it's this, this great exchange that goes on at the cross. Our sin is placed on Jesus and his righteousness is placed on us. So that's a great thing. I, I can't remember what verse it is in, um, but it mentions about, uh, yeah, okay, verse verse 15, verse 14 and 15. After Moses had gone down the mountain to the people, he consecrated them and they washed their clothes. Then he said to the people, prepare yourselves for the third day, abstain from sexual relations. That kind of jumped out at me like the third day because the third day he rose again from the dead. It's like mm -hmm. God is preparing them for something great. Uh, an encounter with the, the, the living God. And uh, Jesus has broken down that barrier uh, between us and God and on the third day rose again. So what he, what he did to break down that barrier, the amen to that is what happens on the third day. Mm -hmm. So that, that was kind of a something that stood out to me. And then I think the other thing was, was that you mentioned beforehand is God descended, like, we don't want to miss that, God descending on the mountain. So, like, what does that, what does that mean to you in, in there? God descended, like, it, that has to be the, one of the most dramatic scenes in all of history on, on this earth. But I, I can't imagine being in those people's shoes as thunder, lightning, a trumpet comes out of nowhere. Yeah. It's almost as if, like some people have described this, kind of like uh, from a physical standpoint, almost like a volcano is going off, right? Yeah. Volcano is yeah. going off, but then God is coming; He's coming down; He's descending in there. It uh, kind of reminds me uh, of when uh, the end comes and Jesus is descending from heaven, right? And um, He comes. Not as a babe this time. So the the first time. So when he when he risen from the dead. When he's risen from the dead, he ascended back into heaven. Right. So the, the disciples see that he's ascending back to heaven. But and the, when he comes again, he comes not as a baby, but as a conquering king. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's got a tattoo on his side: King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He's got a sword coming out of his mouth. I mean, it's, so that's a it's a very fearsome sight yeah. the coming of the lord so this is i think it's more like almost like the second coming of jesus this descending of god it was, it was a fearsome awesome sight right and be like and, no and so like a volcano scary but this is the creator of the universe is yeah that there's something up more it, it, more ra it ra raises yes. it up to the, to the next level so. and there yeah I, I couldn't i couldn't imagine and all the the sound um says the sound of the trumpet goes louder and louder. Yeah, like, like 
a very yeah. visceral moment. And, you know, the trumpet would be used to herald the coming of a king. Well, here's the coming of the king of the universe, as you just said, right? The creator of the universe is coming. Uh, there's a herald uh, signaling that. Of course, he makes up his own trumpet music. Right. <laughs> and, and they had just been told, don't even touch this mountain, let alone look, barely look at it. Right. And then all of that happens. Including animals. Yeah. You keep your livestock away. Everything. Everything is kept away. Um, and it, it says put limits around. I don't know what the limits look like, but it'd be like, let's quickly construct a fence here. <laughs> yeah. Don't don't go beyond. Yeah, so that the people don't rush up like right. a Beatlemania come rush, rushing up. <laughs> You don't go up the mountain. I would say, like, uh, you know, if they put the, if I saw all of that and they put up the fence, I'd be like in the back, like, you know, half a mile by, beyond the, yeah. you know, before the fence limit. I'm not going to stand like leaning over the fence just to be careful. Right. <laughs> there. Uh, so uh, anyway, and then he says, uh, uh, Aaron is supposed to be brought up with him. So he goes gets his brother Aaron, and then they go up. And then we're going to see the Lord is is coming to give them the Ten Commandments, which will be tomorrow. Uh, and we'll go through that. And I want, to, I want you to catch something when we go through the commandments tomorrow of uh, how this is done in the context of relationship. God is always giving his law out in the context of relationship. And I don't want, us to, I don't want you to miss that as we go through that tomorrow. So anything else did you, you had in here that you want, want to... I mean, about. you made the point, and it's just a good one to carry around, that you, you can't even touch the base of the mountain that the Lord stands on, but we'll dine with him and live in his house forever, Yeah. based on the gift of, of Jesus gave us. So Yeah. That, that's, a, that's a big gift. That is, that is, yeah. <laughs> because none of us can stand in his presence in, in our own righteousness. That would be lights out for all of us. So uh, on this day, when I pray for you, um, pray for peace and calmness in our nation, um, that we know that no matter who wins this election, that Jesus is still on his throne, and that's the most important thing. Though there's, you know, presidents come and go, Congress comes and goes, nations come and go, uh, but the word of the Lord stands forever. So let's, uh, let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for... Um, your certainty of who you are and what you've done for us in and through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. May our focus be on that. May our, may our uh, lives reflect the hope that we have that is unshakable, that is found in Jesus Christ, that no matter what's going on, no matter how much chaos is in the world around us, no matter uh, who's elected to offices, no matter uh, what the course of the pandemic takes, whatever else is going on, we know, Lord God, that your love for us will never fail. You have, you have promised in our baptism that you have adopted us as your children. You placed your very name on us. And we know from Scripture that nothing in all of creation can separate us from the love that you have for us in and through Jesus Christ. So, Lord God, fill our hearts with hope no matter what transpires this day that we know we're held in your everlasting and loving arms. We pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 God bless you all. Have a great day.